and it's only been studied formally for the most part, you know, in the last uh, maybe five years. So what I'll tell you about are some, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some fairly um, basic um, ideas and techniques in this area, um, and these are all, you know, um, fairly recent developments. So um, the idea is that um, you have a central um, Um, you, have, uh, um, you have a central coordinator, and this guy wants to know, kind of keep track of some information. And you have a bunch of um, processors. Um, so you have n of these processors, and each of these is getting a stream of data, and both of these and all these can talk uh, with the coordinator. Okay, and so. The stream is not coming in just to one person, one processor that needs to keep track of it, but you want to keep track of the results of all these streams coming in. Um, they're coming at the coordinate. Um, so in the regular streaming, we didn't need to worry about this communication. So now, the the things you you, you care about, Mark, the, the things you care about are one um, space, and this is. Um, at um, coordinator um, and at at the sites, so I'll call these these guys the sites. Um, so you care about the space bounds at all these. This is like the streaming algorithm. Um, there's there's some worry about the runtime, um, but if the space that you store here is small and you, and it's much smaller than the number of items that you're seeing then the runtime should basically be linear in the number of items. There's going to be some small overhead in terms of the space, and usually the algorithms are very simple, and the runtime is not really hard to show. It's going to be pretty small. Um, and then there's a third concern, um, which is the communication. So when you need to send messages from the these, these uh, uh, these individual processors or sites to the coordinator, um, um, you want to minimize these, right? So, one, if you didn't have a, a, a requirement for the, the, the communication to be small, then everything this processor sees, it can say, well, I'm not going to store it, I'm just going to send it to the coordinator. And then the coordinator can deal with it. And if all these sites are saying this, well, then it's essentially a single stream coming to the coordinator. Um, and if the streams are sparse enough and small enough, then yeah, you could probably do that. These guys need zero space. This guy runs a regular streaming algorithm. Um, but in general, this is, this is an important problem when the, the speed of the stream is too fast for one of the full stream is somehow too fast for one processor to deal with. Um, and and uh, so you, you can't put all the work on a single on a single processor. If if all these were pointing here, this one would uh, would would not be able to keep up, even though it's doing small space and fast runtime. Even just reading all the things is going to take too long. Um, um, so the um, so, so the the other thing is often these these may be the the other place where this can come up is these could be um, individual sensors and they're communicating what they've seen to some sort of coordinator. And in a lot of these sensor network problems, the sensors are very low powered. Um, and the most expensive part is actually sending stuff, because this is usually um, some sort of wireless transmission. They can do a small amount of processing on them, but they only very occasionally want to actually send signals to the coordinator. Um, so you really, so this, this, this new problem in, in bounding the, um, the communication is coming in here for, for, for very specific reasons. Um, the, there's, there's one model, so this the sensor network problem is not really like a large data um, problem so much. Usually, you know, they're not collecting more than like a gigabyte of data or so. Or it's, it can be big, but not all that big. But in, in, in really large systems, say if you're, um, if you're um, a large internet company like on like Google or some place that has some central page which is getting lots and lots of hits or lots and lots of requests. All the requests are basically 
coming to the same web page. Right? So there's not one computer that can handle all of these requests. Right? So, so really what's happened here is that um, you're getting all these requests that are somehow coming in. And there's some machine which is saying, well, I'm going to alternate which machine I'm sending, uh, sending this request to. So it's not processing it. It's just saying the, the, the feed of requests is coming into this machine now, and then after some time it switches to another machine. And so there's a stream coming into each of these machines of all these, these this data you have to deal with. And this is a way where if the data is coming in too fast for a single machine, you can kind of split a single stream across all of these, but the same way as in streaming, you want to keep track of, of, a, of a single single object, single thing you want to keep track of. And so you want to keep that on the coordinator, and again, the coordinator may not be able to hold everything because it's in the streaming setting, so you have to send these small sums. So, for example, in the case of Facebook, so obviously they have data centers across different uh, continents, right? Yeah. And let's say Europe, right? So all the people who are in Europe with on the on the on the network inside of Europe, they would access their, their data center. Yeah. So okay, this, this happens via DNS. Okay. Right. And then when it the request comes there, still it has to be somehow distributed across these machines. Is this happen is this actually done on a level of routing? Is this is this done on a level of machines or a coordinator or whatever you call it? I know that for example certain images when you go on Facebook there's yeah. not like one request to one, to one computer. It, there's just one, the, the, the facebook.com request returns you only the, the main page. Then that main page creates plenty of requests to download your images. Right, which right, you right. have servers that all they do, just it's they just send, yeah. they just provide images. They're not dynamic, like, yeah. or interact. Just, they just get. Yeah, so, so, it, it, so if your request is, is just, um, it's just trying to access data, right? You're just trying to pull pull data that's not changing, then then the paradigm is slightly different here. This is more for trying to monitor something um, that's, that's on, on this changing quickly. Um, so you want to keep track of it. I'll, I'll go through several kind of, uh, it's, you know, um, easy to understand problems. Uh, um, um, in the next part. Um, yeah, um, but if you, if you just want to serve something, then yeah, you would, there's, there's some other uh, strategies behind it. So I, I'm not exactly familiar at what level different things are parceled out. Um, yeah, so although like, it's, it's getting popular that these, these servers are moving to your, to your network provider. Yes. Yeah. Which is like right, really so, 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 so we so talked about this some on, on Wednesday, actually. Uh -huh. um, so with Akamai, they'll, they'll, yeah, have, exactly. they'll store a lot of stuff very locally here. But this is a lot harder to do when things are, um, when things are changing. Are updating quickly, right? If you have this, no, you have to, if you're the web page for CNN, yeah, it's being updated, you know, f fairly frequently. But for the most part, it's static, right? Your um, your Twitter feed is personalized to you, and that's a lot harder to keep track of. So they use something that's kind of based on the distributed hash table we talked about. Okay, so so this will be more. So there. Uh, so this discussion is good to have. There are lots of there are lots of different challenges, but lots of different pieces in this kind of fast moving di distributed frameworks, and there are kind of a lot of system challenges in building these. At what level do you distribute the computation and the delivery of things? And and all these things I I believe are worked out at different levels in different companies, different systems, and it's not totally clear what what the right trade off is here. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is kind of a set of cleaner problems um, where you can kind of see some fairly basic strategies um, and how they work um, in these settings. So the, the first thing we'll talk about is just um, um, it's just counting. And we'll, we'll, we'll first talk about the problem of um, of a threshold problem, right? So, so what you want to do is say, um, so let's say that the Apple Store, when they were, with the first time they hit, um, um, there were a million apps that were downloaded. They, they wanted to kind of tell people right away there, there was a million apps, right? But they were 
being downloaded probably from uh, servers which were distributed, and uh, so you're getting counts that an app was downloaded at a bunch of different, you know, of these servers, and you want one central coordinator to keep track of this count. And you want to know when a certain threshold has been reached. When has a million downloads happened? Um, another example I've heard is uh, there are these, um, these large multiplayer computer games where there, there are a bunch of players and they join together to try and, um, to try and attack this, um, like this large dragon or something. And the dragon starts out with like a million hit points and you have to keep whacking away at it until you get down to its hit points and you want to know when it hits zero because that's when it dies, right? If it dies different places at different players, then you know, or, you know, each player is, is having its own counter and you need to add all these together. Um, and so the key insight is that if you're at if you're trying to get to a million and you're only at, say, five hundred thousand, well then you don't really need to be that accurate. As you get closer to a million, you need to start being more and more accurate. Um, right? So so um, so um, so how would this work? So, so you want to, um, so you have the, the, this distributed site, you want to know um, um, when, um, okay, so let's write some, um, some notation. So you're going to have, um, I'll say call them um, P1 through PM, and each, and each of these is going to have a count associated with it. Um, it's going to have N1 up through n, um, n, m. And what you want to know is the t total count, which is, um, which is the sum i equals 1 um, to m. Right. So, so um, and you want to report when n is greater than um, uh, on the, some threshold t, so it's greater or equal, right? And you've downloaded a million apps, so you um, so you want to report this. Um, okay, so when you design an algorithm for this, you're going to have two algorithms running. This is going to be more of a uh, something that's called you, know, you call it a protocol, and you'll have a protocol on the coordinator and on each um, site J, and each of the sites will be running the same algorithm. So you have two algorithms, one for the coordinator and one for each of the sites, okay? Um, and so now um, we have to design kind of, this coordinator will occasionally get messages from the sites and it needs to keep track of, um, so it's gonna keep a track of each of these counters. It's gonna um, maintain um, the set N1 hat, N2 hat, and M hat, so it has all these approximate counts, and N hat, which is going to be this um, the sum of all these. So it's going to maintain this approximate count, and each of these will maintain N J, and it's, and it's going to maintain this exactly. Let me I'll call this I. Okay, so it's going to maintain this exact, right? And every time an item comes in, it needs to update this count. Right, so um, for you know um, on, on incoming item, it's going to do n i equals um, n i plus one. Okay, so it's going to keep track of this count, and when this gets an update to these, it's going to update the counts as well. Okay, but. Now we want to do something. So what I haven't done yet, and I've, I've done explained the basic things, I haven't explained how you and when you communicate back and forth between these different players and the coordinator. And you can talk both ways. The coordinator can send messages down to the players. If the coordinator cannot send messages down to the, the individual sites or the players, then there's really nothing you can do, right? That means that none of these sites knows how close you are to the, the um, this threshold. So it could always be that its app, its its the thing that it's received is the million you know uh, app that's been downloaded. So it needs to, it always needs to send something to the coordinator. 
and that means you would need to need to send everything, right? But wh what we'd like to do is to be able to send, uh, um, we'd like to be able to send much less than everything, right? All right. So, um, so how do we do this? So, so let's also so. Um, Okay, so, so I'm going to give you a hint. If something, then send an I to uh, the coordinator. So if something happens, I need to send this to the coordinator. And uh, so, and then if something happens, I'm going to send. I'm going to send uh, something called tau to all sets. Okay. So and it, 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 if this guy receives anything, it updates these guys, right? So that's that part is obvious. Okay. There can be a threshold. So when uh, the count reaches to a certain threshold, then the site can send uh, some signal to the. Uh, so if if the individual count reaches a threshold. Yeah. So, so what should what should the threshold be? Um, and that can be decided. As um, this is the uh, this is getting closer. Um, so, so you it somehow be something depending on uh, the number of types. I mean, I can also... yeah. So it, it, it'll depend on it'll de depend on, on the number of sites. Yeah, and what runtime um, you want. What? And what what is the runtime you want? Well, so so I want something that's going to be uh, logarithmic in t. So so I don't want to send. So if t is a million, I don't want to send a million messages. I want to send something like log of a million messages. All right, so 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 I said before that if if I'm very far away from my threshold, then I don't really need to I don't really need to send things very often. Okay, so 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 let's look at some quantity. Oh, these pens are very good. So let's see. So um, let's look at d. Which is going to be equal to um, n hat minus or sorry, t minus n hat. So this is going to be my distance from from the threshold. Okay. So if if I'm if I'm um, if I'm far away from the threshold, so let's say I'm I'm basically at a distance t over less than t over 2, then I could have some error on, on all of the sites. But it's unlikely all that error will add up to be more than this distance. Right? So I, I can look at how much error can I have on each of the sites, and I, can, and I know I must still be less than the threshold. Okay? So, so what if, so if that, that same error I could have on each of the sites, then let's look at the quantity d over m. All right. So this is the distance from the threshold, and this is the number of sites. So if I had this much error, d over m, on all of the sites, then I'd still be OK. Right? I, if I had d over m error on all the sites, um, or I, I had strictly less than this, I would, I would have to be OK. So. So, so, so I'm going to start with a value. We'll call this. Um, um, we'll call this how one, and th this is going to be equal to the total. Um, this is the total threshold um, divided by two m. 
Okay? So, um, so, so it, I, now I'm going to say, um, now on each of the sites, I'm going to keep track of, of something else in, in addition to this count. I'm going to keep track of, um, I'll call this KI. So KI will be the number of things that has come in since, since, uh, since the last message. So I'm actually going to send NI, and then I'm going to set KI equal to zero. And I'll say, if KI, no, if KI is greater than tau, um, then I'm going to send my stuff in, right? So if, if the number of new messages since the last thing I've sent is greater than, than the threshold, then I'm going to send in an update. Okay, so, um, so, so I know that if, if, the, if the distance is less than, if, if the error on all sides is less than, um, is less than D over M, then I'm going to be okay. So I need to somehow figure out when to update these, this threshold to, um, to send out. So, so, so how this is going to work is if, um, so I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep a counter um, equal to zero, and then um, on 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 message, I'm going to um, I'm going to, I'm going to increment this counter. So I'm going to say if c is equal to m then I'm going to send a threshold to all the sites. But I need to send, um, so when I send it to all the sites, that means is I need to send m of these messages, and I don't want, um, and so, so, so even if some of the sites have been updated, I, um, I, I'm going to have to send this to all, the me to all the sites. So I don't want to do this too often. So I only do it every m messages I get. Um, and so, but, but now when I do this, that means that I've gotten a lot higher count. So I need to, um, I need to send a smaller threshold here. So I'm going to set um, tau equals to tau over 2. And then I'm going to send out this new, this new threshold. So you send this every, uh, for every M messages that coordinator gets. But, uh, it, uh, is it possible that uh, some sites haven't sent the message? Uh, yeah, that's, okay. well, that's definitely possible, yeah. So it could be that as soon as you send out the new threshold, then the site's value of k, you know, if the threshold was at 20, um, and the site's value of k was at 12, well then he gets um, a value of, uh, um, of um, um, he, he's going to get an, um, He's going to get um, a new. He's then going to be about the threshold. He needs to send a message. You're actually going to need to to, to analyze it to make the an analysis look a little simpler. You're actually going to set this to k i minus tau. That way, every time you send a message, you send exactly um, um, you, you, you're going to send. So you 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 can send in a message tau. And you say tau things have happened. So if I had more than that, um, it, it's going to be it's be a, a little bit easier to analyze. Um, you're always going to send exactly tau things so that the counts even up. Okay. So let's so let's look at a picture of how this will work. This is going to be the, the coordinator, and this is the value of the threshold that you want to reach. And then each of the sites are I'm going to be here, and so what's going to happen is, in if this, so that initially, so there, are, there are going to be m equals four, and so that means, and the threshold is here, so that means that um, t over two m is going to be one eighth. Okay, so if this site sends sends a message, what's going to happen is he's going to fill up a slot which is going to be one eighth of here. And then let's say this guy sends a message. It's going to be another eighth. These are both the same size. 
maybe this guy is, sends, sends another message. It's still going to be an A. And then, now, this guy sends a message. Okay, so now, I've reached, what happened is I've reached halfway to the threshold. And at this point, I know that the amount of error on each of these sites is going to be, each of these will have at most um, tau things that they have not sent. Otherwise, they would have sent them in. And because there are M of these sites, and I have half the things left, and uh, the tau was T over 2M, then what's going to happen is each of these, if they try to fill in one eighth of these things left, right, and I have four eighths left, the sum of all the counts on all these cannot total four eighths. So I have not reached the threshold yet. So that means I'm still safe, even though I've sent in four messages so far. But at this point, I'm no longer safe if I don't, if I keep the same threshold. So I need to send out a new value of the threshold. And now the threshold decreases. And so now, in the next round, maybe this guy says, OK, well, now I can send a message. And it's going to be 1 16th. And then this guy sends another message. It's going to be 1 16th. This guy sends a message 1 16th. And this guy sends a message. It's 1 16th, right? So now I have 1 fourth of t left. And I know that on each of the sites, I have at most 1 16th of the threshold. And, um, and that means to 1 16th times 4 is at most 1 fourth. And I know that the sum of all the things on all the sites cannot total um, this gap here. So I know I'm still safe. But if I keep going like this, I could be in trouble. They could all reach, they, they could all reach uh, this at the, they could send one more message and then they could reach this. So I need to s set my threshold to be smaller and then you set it to be 1 32nd and then they start sending messages which are even even skinnier, you know, and then and it keeps going. And this keeps going down until the message is of, is of size one and then you send everything exactly. So at the when you're very close to the threshold, you have to send a lot of messages because you want to hit it exactly. But when you're far away, you have you have a lot smaller number of messages. Okay. So the, is is everyone convinced that this algorithm will work? That I will I will as soon as the teeth item comes in, I will I will send it to the coordinator, and I will know kind of as soon as possible that I've reached the threshold. Um, and, and I can't possibly have the sum of these plus the counts here be larger than the total count. Because otherwise the threshold would have had to do it. Okay? Is, is that believable? No? It's, it's, it's okay? Okay. Um, um, so, 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 one thing is the correctness. The other thing is how many messages total is this going to take? So there are only two parameters in here, right? Two input parameters. One is going to be the number of sites m. The other is going to be the threshold size t, the total number of items I see. So how many messages does it take? Um, does the protocol run up until the point where I, I hit the threshold? So, so I mentioned I want something logarithmic in t, right? Is, uh, um, does that sound right? How would you think about, how do you think about um, logarithms here. So, you know, if you're doing if you're if you're doing if you're doing a binary search, right? The binary search is about cutting something in half every time, right? And that's how you're getting logarithmic time for doing binary search, right? So, in order to get a logarithmic in T, I somehow need to cut the problem size in half every every time. And if I Every time I, I do something, I cut the problem size in half, I should have logarithmic number of steps. T by m log n? T 
by m log m? Is that what you're, you think the, the bound is? So, so, Number so, of so you think it's t by m log m? Log m is a third Log. So, so, so the log, so t by m log m. That? Okay, so anyone else have any, any guesses? No guess. Okay, so, so this is not quite the right answer. I want, so this is still basically, you know, if t is a million and m is four, this still takes basically, you know, um, 250,000 messages. If, and I would not be happy with that. Um, and plus, the, this is this bound is is going to be it's going to be way too high. Um, okay, so this is the final quiz of the class. So. So I somehow, I'm, I'm going to get something, I want logarithmic in t, right? t is the really big one here. m is, can be maybe hundreds, but it's not going to be millions. Is it m log t? m log t, okay. That's just a guess. Um, why would you say that? You said you wanted something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, that's a very, so, see, that's a sort of, the sort of way you learn to answer things when you're in school, right? You know, when, when someone asks you a question on a test, you know it's going to have a clean answer, right? Um, yeah. But, okay, so. Jeff, could you explain again how, what's the initial size of the message that is? The initial size of the message is going to be, the initial threshold is going to be t over 2m, mm -hmm. and, then in the, and then after it's changed, after I see m messages, I'm going to set it to t over 2. So then the next time, so I'm going to say t2 is going to be t over um, 2 to the 2m. t3, I'm going to divide it by 2 again, is going to be t over 2 to the 3m. And in general, after when I when I've divided it um, in half j times, it's going to be t to the two over j. Okay, so it's helpful. So if you know something here, it's helpful to think of this event. Think of what happens at this event. This is say the end of a round. Okay, and I drew this in color. Right, the first. The blue section here took half of t, and this was one round. And then there was the green part here. This was a quarter of t, and this was one round. And then there's the black part here. This was an eighth of t, and this was one round. Okay. Okay, so let's hopefully we should be close to seeing how to do this. So how many messages do I send in one round? M. Oh, yeah. um, so where are the M messages coming from? So let's walk me through this again. Not from the from each of the sites. So each of the sites. Yeah, good. So each of the so I've, I've got M messages from the site. I also want to, I, I send T to all of the sites. So this also takes M messages. But, but that's okay. Asymptotically, so it's two M messages. That's, that's okay. Um, so, th so that's why I wait for M things to send this out because I can charge each thing I sent out to all the sites to one incoming message. So each round is going to be M messages. Okay, now how many rounds are there going to be? So, so, so if you're log, playing a so log T. What? Wouldn't there be log, log T rounds? That's right, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, it, exactly. Hey, that's right. <laughs> it was just a guess, right? It was just I, a guess, I, I honestly. Give, I could let you get away with it. I know, that's true. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so this is, you know, the, 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 this many messages. 
So this is the right answer. Or O of it's sort of by two of m log t s. Yeah. So it's it's useful to kind of think of these these processes and these rounds, and you want the round to be logarithmic in the number of things you've you've seen so far. So, and the uh, and the and then you can each round you can say the small number of events, right? So this is a very common approach to thinking about these distributed scripts. Right, so, 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 so everyone's played this game where I say I'm thinking of a number between one and a million. You can make a guess and I'll tell you higher or lower, right? And if you do it right, it should take log a million guesses at most. Right, because you're cutting the size of the problem in half every time. Right, so this should be very basic concept in computer science. And here each round is cutting the problem size in half each time. So you get this, this, this logarithmic problem. Okay. So any questions about this algorithm? Okay, so now we're going to change the problem a little bit. And um, but we're going to use some similar similar ideas. So let me write this <coughs> <coughs> So, so now what I want to do, this was, this was a threshold problem. I want to see when I reached a threshold. Now I want to do an, an, approximate, um, an approximate tracking problem. I want the coordinator, um, I want to maintain an, an estimate and hat. Um, um, such that, um, so, so, so again, I'm going to use big N as the true total count, um, such that um, N hat is less than N, less or equal, and less or equal to 2 times N. Okay, and I want to maintain this on the coordinate. So now I'm not reaching a threshold, but I want to, I want to keep an estimate which is going to be close to n. And after we do this, we're going to change this so this 2, we're going to be able to modify this, this algorithm approach so the 2 is actually 1 plus epsilon for any, for any epsilon greater than 0. So you can get any relative error approximation. So you want to maintain an approximate count. Now, when I reach a threshold, so, you know, now what's happening here is when I was very small, I could be really far away. I could be really inaccurate. But when I got close to the threshold, these messages are getting smaller and smaller, right? So it's kind of like Zeno's paradox, right? It's the, the, that, um, so, so, so has everyone heard of, um, so, um, so who's heard of Zeno's paradox? Okay, so, so Zeno's paradox is about, well, I've heard it described in terms of this rabbit who's, who's trying to jump across a rope. And, and, he's, and every time he jumps, he jumps halfway, um, he jumps halfway of the rest of the way across. Okay? So, if the rabbit is here, so he starts here, and this is the end. His first jump, he jumps halfway, and he's, he's here. The first jump was really good. The second jump, only halfway of the rest of the way. Right, so this is, my scale's not great. But I, after two jumps, he's at three quarters of the way there. After three jumps, he's seven eighths of the way there. After four jumps, he's 15th over 16th of the way there. He's getting closer and closer. How many jumps until the rabbit reaches the end? Yeah, so, the, so the, the, the rabbit unfortunately eventually gets hit by a car. Um, he, he, he never reaches the end. Um, so, the, so, but the, the, so it's, it's kind of a paradox because, you know, it's an infinite number of jumps. But the, what's happened here instead is that because there's a minimum message size, so eventually, 
you know, the, the rabbit can't jump either zero or, or some, some small step, and eventually that step will be enough to cross. Okay, so, so the rabbit does not actually, in, if the world is discrete, the rabbit will cross the road in log of the number of smallest, you know, distance divided by smallest jump size jumps. So, so we don't actually live in this continuous world, we're in a discrete world, and the rabbit safely crosses the road if there's not too much traffic. Um, okay, so, 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 so before we're doing this where the, the chunk size is getting smaller and smaller, but now it's going to actually be the opposite. When n is very small, in order to get a 2 approximation, we need to um, be very, send a lot of messages, right? If there are only, um, if there are only 7, if the total count is 7, I have to then if n is 7, then n hat has to be at least, um, has to be, uh, at least 4. Right, if, n, if, if this was 3, it'd be too small. So, so, so I have to be, and when, when n is equal to 1, I have to send a message. If it's 2, I have to, have to send a, a message. Right, but once this is a million, then I can wait a, a, a lot longer to send messages. Okay, so, so how, would, how would I do this problem where I'm now maintaining an estimate? It's going to look kind of like, like this problem, but, but backwards. Okay. Should you start with smaller? So, so now the, the coordinator is going to start with the threshold that's equal to 1, right? And um, in each site, you know, I is, is going to um, maintain, again, it will have the ni and, and the ki, where ki is messages since the last thing sent, and n is the total. All you actually really need to keep track of is ki, um, which is the number of messages since the last thing, the number of things you've seen since since the last count. And you're going to again, the, the the algorithm on on the site is actually going to be um, exactly the same. You're going to say if ki is greater than tau, then um, send tau set ki to ki minus tau. And on the coordinator, I'm going to say, um, so I, I'm going to keep a counter, set this to zero, if counter equals to m, then, um, then I'm going to um, set my tau equals to um, 2 times tau. And um, I'm going to send tau to all sites. And, right, and then on an incoming message, um, on incoming, I'm going to set n hat, n hat plus tau. And uh, C, C, and then this also sets back to zero. So it's now this is very similar to what was before. Um, I've written this one a bit more cleanly because I didn't kind of write all the all the notes here, right? But all it needs to do is maintain this this one counter, and how many things it's seen so far. And every time it gets a, a count, it's it's going to be um, an update. It's going to be a value tau from one of the sites. And all the site needs to do is win the messages it's seen so far um, <clears throat> since the last thing it sent reaches tau, um, then it's, it has to, um, has to send in, has to send in its count. Okay? All right, so, um, 
All right, so, so let's, let's first try and see, uh, it's a little bit easier to analyze the number of messages in this, and then we'll go back and analyze the, to, to, to prove that this is actually correct. Okay, the, the proof you need to um, work a little something out, but it's not too hard. Okay, so, so, so why, so how many messages is this going to send? Um, Okay, so let's use the same tricks we used in the first in the first approach here. We're going to break this into rounds, and we're going to have a nice event that distinguishes when a round ends. And we're going to count how many messages in, be in between the rounds, and we're going to multiply that by the number of rounds. So we're going to say um, messages in round, and this is going to be times the um, number of rounds. Okay. So again, so what is the number of messages in one of these rounds? Okay, so let's, let's get some, so someone from back there. So it was not, so how many messages have we gotten in, in one of the rounds? Or someone who has not answered And not me either, because I think hopefully me knows the answer to this one. So, um, there are n messages. There are n messages. Why are there n messages? Because it's your threshold. You have, you have a counter. So, so I the counter reached m, <coughs> and I sent out n messages to the sentence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, someone else, how many, how many rounds do I have? So, so, so now, before I had two parameters, I have M and T that I can measure this in. Now I have M, the number of sites, and the only other thing I have is N, which is, is the number of total, um, of total elements I've seen so far. So I need to measure the number of rounds is going to be, maybe it depends on M, but it's going to depend on this N parameter as well. So how many rounds, how many rounds could I have? So, so let's say that N is, N is going to be, um, um, So, so let's say n, I'm, I'm going to give you a hint, n is going to be um, 2 to the i. Um, or I used i before, so let's say 2 to the um, t. Okay. So, so So, so it's yes. So if n is this size, then it's going to be you're going to have t rounds, okay? Because each each round it was going to be at most t rounds. There's some you have to do a um um a um a summation or anything. Okay, so let me. This, this number is going to be a little abstract. Let me, let me give a real example here again. So let's, let's go through this, right? So if I'm at n here, and let's say I've just ended one of these rounds. Okay, so that means that I have just received m of these, of these messages. And let's say m is equal to 4 again. But I just received m of the messages. Each of these tau's were now um, some large, some large number, right? So I received n of m of these messages, and they're each, um, each pretty large. 
in the previous round, I had received m of these messages. So again, four of these messages here. Right? And each of these messages were half the size. Right? And then in the, in the round before that, I had also received m of the messages. And again, each of them were half the size. And in the very first round, run out of colors. In the, in the very first round, each message was of size one, <coughs> right? So I got m of these messages of size one. So if you look at this picture and you look at that picture, you should be able to figure out how many rounds there. Are. The same picture is just flipped upside down, right? Yeah, so, so it's going to be log n, right? So, it's, so, um, so, so the number of rounds is going to be log, um, log n. So the total number of messages will be n times log n, because the total before this was t up here, now it's n. And now I'm, I can kind of need to analyze this going backwards. Um, now I may be off by one round, but Asymptotically, it's roughly the same. Um, so you can actually analyze this a little bit cleaner. Um, so the, the, actual, the actual size here is going to be m times log n over m. Because in each of these, well, actually, I'm not okay. I'm not totally sure of this. There's there's some I I forget off the top of my head. You might be able to squeeze a little bit of faction of log, but it shouldn't act too much. Okay, so we have m m um, log n rounds here. So we have ten minutes left. I want to. I want to show that. So, I, okay. So, I think people are maybe still confused here. I, I was. What I want to show is that th there was this problem we talked about on the streaming called, uh, um, called the heavy hitters problem, where we're keeping track of a bunch of different counts instead of just one count. We want to keep track of, of a bunch of counts, but we only care about the ones which are which are large. Um, so think of this. The classic example is you're looking at. Uh, on denial of, of service attacks, right? And so you're, you have um, routers are keeping track of which IP addresses are getting a lot of, of, of packets that are being sent to them. Um, and so you want to know if one, one uh, IP address has had a huge number of packets sent. So you want to keep track of all of the, uh, um, it, so you want to keep track of all of the, uh, um, all of the counts which are really large. Oh, but before I, before I move to that, I want to mention something else. So I said this was within a factor two. Now, a count within a factor two, you know, is, is not all that useful, right? So does Facebook have, um, you, know, you know, a billion users or two billion users? I'd rather know that it's, it's, it's 1.376 um, billion users, right? I'd rather be much more accurate as so I'd rather get a 1 plus epsilon x estimate here. So I'd be off by only a 1 plus epsilon for any small factor epsilon. So there's one small change in here um, where I need to change the algorithm to get a 1 plus epsilon factor. And I'll give you a hint. It changes a 2 to a 1 plus epsilon. So if you can read my handwriting, there's, you should be able to make a pretty good guess of where, where I change this. If you can't read my handwriting, then you probably haven't followed what's going on. But, um, near, the hmm? near the threshold. Near the threshold. Here. The two. What should I do with the two? Replace it by one by one minus epsilon. 
I, I have to increase it. Yeah, one, uh, one divided by one minus. That would, that would probably work, actually. Um, but um, if I want to change the error from 2 to 1 plus epsilon, I should change this value to, let's cross this out, and it, it should be 1 plus epsilon times the whole portion. So now I'm only increasing, increasing by a much smaller factor. So if you do this, you have to send, um, it seems like you have to send um, a lot more actual data. Um, what's going to happen in the analysis is the number of rounds, instead of being a log base 2 event, so usually when you write a log, it's either base E or base 2, and here the hidden was the base 2. Right? But now it's going to be a log of 1 plus epsilon f. Log one base of 1 plus epsilon. Okay, so, so there's a little trick. Um, if you do asymptotically log of 1 plus epsilon n, this is equivalent to O of m over epsilon times log 2 of it. So I have an ex extra 1 over epsilon factor. So if I want to be within 1% error, I'm going to need an extra, extra 100 factor in the messages. If I want to be within 10% error, I'm going to need to be a, essentially an extra 10 factor in messages. Okay. So. And to, to show that this works, this is homework. You should go do this at home and convince yourself that these are asymptotic. Um, okay. Um, all right. So, so let me very. Okay. So, so maybe I'll just ask. Does anyone have any ideas how you do the heavy hitter problem? So, in, so that this is maintaining a single count. The heavy hitters. I want to maintain all counts within within epsilon error. Okay, and now, and so so I, I want um, so what's happening now is every um, so it's each stream of the elements. We still have this stream is going to be a one, a two. So now each. Each A, instead of just being something I'm keeping track of, is each AI is going to be in um, some domain U, right? And so, um, so, so let's say for each J that's in U, I'm going to keep track of a count, FJ of A is going to be the size of all A in A, such that AI is going to J. So it's the count of all the elements that have value j from this domain. So this is an IP address. Or maybe it's a word out of a big dictionary of words. How many times has the word the occurred? How many times has an IP address happened where there's a denial of service attack on the IP address? So now we have, instead of just a single count, we have all these counts. We want to maintain them. What we want is on the server an fj hat such that fj this is going to be the difference between them is going to be epsilon n. Okay, so the difference is some epsilon parameter. You could think of this as being maybe if you say two that's going to be uh, or if you say one half here that's going to be too easy. Right? But you can use the same epsilon approach to, to, to get something like this. So instead of just one count, you're doing it for all of these counts. Now, if the, the trick is that, again, recall from the heavy hitter approach that if this count is really small, it's less than epsilon n. Say epsilon is 1 over 100. Less than 1 out of every 100 things is to that IP address. You can completely ignore this. You can set this guy to be 0, and that's fine. So you only need the ones which are large to be accurate. So, okay, so, so how do we do this? So we have 
two minutes to figure this out. And you can't leave until we figure this out. <laughs> So I'll, I'll give you a hint. You're also going to run this algorithm as is, and you're going to maintain an estimate um, n within 1 plus epsilon factor. Okay? And it'll be useful to also maintain this same threshold tap. So you're going to have this algorithm at your disposal running in parallel. And so remember, when I say this count is within here, this is equivalent to saying that n hat minus n is less than epsilon is, is less than or equal to epsilon n. Right? So this total count was less or equal to epsilon. That's what I used this red version with the one plus epsilon. Right? So this is the same bound that I want over here, except this is for if you know if all the things came to the same counter, I could use this algorithm I'd be fine. But now they're each going to these different, um, these different values j, these different IP addresses. I want to keep track of all the large ones. But the good thing is that I do know this, this threshold here. I do know this good threshold. want to save people, Mina, so they can go, or? I don't want to spoil it. You don't want to spoil it, though? No? <laughs> hmm. Is it doing the same as it's, 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 it's very similar, but you need, to, you need to tell me how to do it. So the only thing that really changes is going to be on the site. He's going to have some extra things that he keeps, keeps track of and extra things that he sends. He has to send more than just his total count. He also has to send the IP address. Yeah, so this guy is going to also keep estimates. He's going to have um, um, for all J in U, it's going to keep track of F of J of, um, right, so, so AI is the stream that's come into site I. He's going to keep track of the count F of J here. Okay, so he will keep track of this. You can actually show you, you can run a streaming algorithm here and keep these approximately and things will still work. But he keeps track of these. And let's say that he also keeps track of, um, so let's, let's call this kj, which was, is equal to the number of items j since the last sent, right? So before we kept a total count k, the number of items since the last thing we sent. Now we're going to do this for each of the individual ones of these. We're going to keep track of how many things have we seen since the last time I sent a message. And yes, this guy does need to send messages for each of the for each of the, these values here. Okay, so if something I'm going to send um, tau and j. So tau is my threshold, the same, the same magic threshold, and also the value j I'm going to send. So I'm going to send something associated with some one of these elements. So I, I just need to fill in this if statement. Is any of the fj is greater than the threshold? Well, if it's greater than the threshold once, I've already sent it. I need to be... I mean, it, it, the threshold in that room. Yeah, so... What I'm going to need is if kj, which is the number of things since the last one I sent, is greater or equal than the threshold, then I'm going to send it. So the, this will grow bigger than the threshold. It could be really big, and it'll keep growing. 
and then I would only send it once. I need to, and then if this happens, I'm going to set kj equals to kj minus this threshold. Right? So, I, so I keep track of how many things I've sent. So if, if my, what kj is measuring, what this is measuring is how much air do I have on the site at the core, from the site at the coordinator. These are the number of things of, of item J that occurred, which I have not told the coordinator about. And if this gets too big, I need to send it. Okay, so, and then the coordinator just keeps track of all these things. It sums up all the tiles associated with this J. And I claim that, that this algorithm will work. So, so I, I, we're running out of time, so I'll just tell you, it's going to actually, asymptotically, it's going to be the same number of messages as just keeping one count. I'm not even increasing the number of messages by doing, I mean, I'm going to probably essentially double the number of messages. Right? Um, but not asymptotically, I'm not increasing the number of messages, and I get a much richer description. Instead of just a single count, I'm going to have um, counts for, for um, approximate counts for each of the items. So the kind of, I'll kind of give you a brief overview. The, the trick to see that this works is, as this stream progresses, I'm getting more and more items, which means that the error I have, this can keep increasing. I can have larger and larger error, but I care about the error relative to the, to the whole fraction of it. I care about, have I seen, has more than 5% of the stream um, you know, uh, occurred, 5% uh, of the packets gone, gone toward this IP address. And because it's a percentage of the total stream, as I get longer, uh, larger and larger stream, it's harder for me to, to have, um, to, to, for this count to be above even epsilon n, right? If this is, if you have 1% error, it's, you need to have more than, you, if you haven't sent anything before, you need to play catch up a lot, a lot of messages in a row in order to, to get above the threshold. Um, so essentially the sum of all of these messages will never be more um, than all of, all of these messages. And you can, you need to kind of uh, argue it a little bit carefully, but um, you can, if you, if you think about it, this, the number of messages here is not going to be more than the number of messages here. Because each of these counts corresponds to some of these counts. Right, so you can get this richer description with the same number of messages. Pretty cool. Um, I'm so, all right, so, so this is kind of um, you know, a basic idea, but there's a, there's a, like a growing like a small area of you know, in these sorts of, of uh, New algorithms, and this is all in the last, you know, last, you know, maybe five years at the most, but most in the last five, three years, um, that people have been studying these. Um, and it, it so, so this is an algorithmic problem, but it, it comes up in a lot of, uh, in some form, in a lot of these real studies. So, um, so all right. So um, it's the end of the lecture in the class. So I hope to see you all on uh, Wednesday and Friday and get some really interesting interesting presentations. Um, so I've been a bit behind on my email this week, but if you have any questions on your uh, presentation or something, feel free to send me an email, and um, probably especially after Tuesday afternoon or so, I should, I should have plenty of time to respond to them. So. Um, but if, I'll try and respond to them before. All right, so um, remember to fill out the, the online evaluations, and I hope you, you know, give me some good scores.